what do we have here? So one is a um, piece, single piece of wood painted on the surface, right? Uh, which is carved, as you can see, in the round. And there are some um, uh, painting pigment that have been put on the faces and on the, the round. If you look at the, at the side, it's very interesting the way in which it has been made. You can see almost the shape of the wood. And inside, you can see it's completely, it has been hollowed, you know, almost in a sort of like concave way. This one, it's this companion, and that's a different type like, uh, you can see here of material. First of all, this is a particular type of um, a vine of, um, uh, called um, Ligodium, which has been split and then uh, uh, lashed into a series of loops, very, very tight loops together. And also, as it was done like that, we started to create a volume. So that's quite an impressive technique, which is closer to basketry, even though that's not a basket. Those two, articles, those two things have been qualified in literature as masks. And I found that terminology very interesting because as soon as we, call, we say mask, what does that evoke? That evokes the fact that somebody is wearing that. We often think that you know, a mask is something that a human being will you know, carry on its face, on his face or her face, right? To conceal or modify her or his identity. Or not only to, and when I say modify, it's to transform into something else. Think about the you know, theatrical tradition, right, in Japan, in China, and everywhere in the world, basically. So, because this is, and that's very interesting, because these artifacts are presenting us with features in which we recognize, in this one, an anthropomorphic face, and this one presents us with another type of uh, face, which is interesting, interestingly could be considered a bit like avian, like a bit like a bird or something like that, right, with a beak. And also it fits, not completely, but it fits. So it fits like it's a mask, so it was worn by a human being, and then we could go into, it's during a ritual, it's like, you know, a masquerade, there are longer, you know, there are documented tradition of masquerade in Africa, in everywhere in the world, as I say. In fact, here, not at all. Those masks were used um, for decorating yams, those very those tubers that are cultivated all around Asia. The yams, indeed, were the cultivation of yam occupied a very, very important place in Melanesian uh, imagination, all across Melanesia, up until New Caledonia, and different Pacific community, Melanesian community, have developed their own sort of uh, mythology and thinking through yams. For them, Again, people and things, relationship. They're using yams a bit as a sort of, uh, as a model to think through people, to think through kinship. For example, in our own tradition, we think of kinship in, West, in the West in terms of, uh, you know, a descent tree, yeah? A genealogical tree. When, you know, you see a tree like that and the branches that goes. For them, that's exactly the reverse. They are, they are also using a vegetal to imagine the way in which lineage grow, but they are using more like yams and things like that. So it occupies a very important part, sometimes even more than food, right? Every year, at the end of the, of, uh, the agricultural cycle, people would take the longest yam, decorate them very richly with feathers, with shell, with a very following very specific codes of decoration. And they decorate them, so with a rich series of ornaments, and those masks. That give them, then, the appearance of, a sort of anthropomorphic appearance. And so, that's a moment during that ritual moment, during that ceremony, in which yams are made human-like, if you want, almost. Because the decoration that they use for the yams are exactly the same they use for initiation they used to use for initiation. That is that young initiate would be decorated like the young whale. So by putting this type of decoration, they are playing a very interesting game of equivalence here. They also look like some of the figures that were painted on the facade, which were the ancestors. So the, the people, the Abedan people, would use those decoration to create a sort of echo analogies between different, uh, uh, different elements, between the young, between the human beings, between the ancestors. But in those series of analogies, you wouldn't have one single referent. That is very interesting. So, not that yam were 
human beings, or yams were ancestor and human were ancestor, is the fact that all of them were different appearances of the same principle that manifested itself on the painting, on carvings too, on human ornaments, and on yams, and on people. So using this type of ornament was a way to blur the boundaries between the different categories of things.